Hello everyone and welcome back to more of the Fruit of Grisaya. In the last episode, we're up here in the cabin. We had a lot of fun. We got to do some hard work. But we decided to uh, basically sleep in the cabin because it was really late. And going home would have been kind of dangerous at that time. Before her bath, Machina's eyelids seemed to have grown about as heavy as lead. But the hot water seemed to have given her something of a second wind. It takes a little doing to get her crammed into bed. Although she nods off easily enough in the middle of the day, the girl also has a habit of refusing to fall asleep when you actually want her to. Normally I could leave this to Mani, but that's obviously not an option today, because she's not here. Fortunately, no matter how much Machina grumbles about not being sleepy yet, when I forcibly scoop her up, she always ceases the struggle and wraps her arms around my neck. Basically, the girl is just scared of going to bed alone. After that, it's a simple matter of depositing her in bed and holding her hand for 30 minutes or so until she falls asleep in earnest. When I lift Machina's small body in my arms, I'm struck by the scent of a familiar shampoo. Mingling with the subtle, feminine smell of her skin, it reminds me so strongly of Asako that I actually start start a little in surprise. Ne, Papa, huh? Uh, which one was, was I telling you again? Ito ne, Papa ga Amerika ni sunde ta koro no hanashi de, tomodachi to kake o shite. 180メートル先の標的に当てたってやつ What again? I already told you that one three times today. もう一回聞きたいよ。あとみんなでハイキングに行った時の社会15センチの話も聞きたい。You <laughs> You really like this stuff for some reason, don't you? I'm not sure why she finds this sort of thing so interesting, but Makina's burning to hear my stories lately. The flower pot, the cat, and the severed head. His name was Ryback. Unlucky Zippo. Where's the telephone? Atu Island. From among this fairly well varied assortment of anecdotes, there's one in particular that's clearly become the girl's favorite. Specifically, 180 meters from scrubbing the john. Right. So this was back when I was 14 years old, attending Uncle Sam's school in America. One day I ended up making a bet with a classmate. I'd been distinguishing myself as a sniper at a time. And this particular classmate kept coming at me with this stupid line, What's with the rifle specialty? Isn't your name Uzi? Not only did I not fight back, I didn't show the slightest sign of irritation at the stupid joke, which eventually pissed my classmate off pretty badly. They ended up challenging me to a bet, hoping to knock me down a peg. The bet itself was about as simple as they come. I had to land a shot on a can of tomatoes from 200 yards. It sounded pretty damn pointless, so I refused to play along at first, but when my classmate offered to take over a week's worth of laundry duty if I won, my perspective on the matter changed. After managing to bargain my way up to three shots, I ultimately accepted the bet, but there was one major problem. The rifle I had to use. At the time, I didn't have authorization to use anything but the small bore and a 22 caliber round, so inevitably, the gun I was using for this best was just a 22 LR bolt action rifle. Normally speaking, you'd want to be firing a small ball rifle at 25 to 50 meters. The bullet itself can travel a good 1600, but the effective range normally makes out of less than 100. Not only was I using this thing for a shot from 200 yards to slightly over 182 meters, it was taking place outside where I'd have to deal with wind. Felt like pretty shitty odds, but on the second round I managed a solid hit. Naturally, that meant I was the winner of our bet. But unfortunately... One of the instructors found I had taken the rifle without permission, so instead of a laundry fee week of leisure, I ended up ordered to scrub latrines until shit smelled like a daisies. But apparently the tomato can I shot is still enshrined in the school cafeteria along with photographic evidence. I'm trying not to get all nostalgic about my wild youth or whatever, but I can't help smiling a little wryly, more at my inability to tell Machina a halfway decent bedtime story than anything else. Mm. Aw, she's swallowing the sweet. But when I finally snapped back to reality, I realized that Machina's closed her eyes and begun mumbling in her sleep. The lengthy trip and weeding of the sun must have tired her out after all. Feeling more than a little relieved, I quietly leave the cabin with my cell phone in hand. Although there is a tower relatively close by, the signal is not particularly good inside the cabin itself. I walk off a little ways until the mirror at the top of my screen displays three bars. Then call up the contact list and select Komi Nisashi's name. After about three rings, she picks up the phone and instantly, not even bothering to say hello, begins hurling questions at me. Azami-san, where are you now? I've been asking you 
Uh, sorry, the reception's not so great out here. Right, about that. We're actually still in Yamashini. Makina's actually already fallen asleep, so for tonight we're going to stay out here, then head back tomorrow around noon. Sorry for the trouble, but would you mind looking after Makina's crawfish and apple seedling while we're away? Oh god. No, the signal's fine. I could hear you the first time. No need to repeat the question 20 decibels louder. Michiru, what are you doing there? Oh my god. Michiru. See, now look what you've done. The noisy blonde's in full squawk. Uh, not a Amani's gonna get on the phone. Amani's gonna be pissed. Huh? Hey, Sachi, what was that sound? Sorry for the hassle. That's right, we should be back tomorrow afternoon, so I doubt it'll be a problem, but I'd appreciate it if you just keep an eye on him. Uh, thanks, I'll make sure to bring you some hodo and black honey rice cakes as a souvenir. What's up? What? Not to worry, I picked up a 24 pack of rubbers on the way over. It was a joke. Calm down. Oh god. I'm telling you it was a joke. I'm not going to do anything. In the first place, Makin is already asleep, remember? No, not what? What? You're really determined about this, aren't you? Yeah, you're not one to joke around, so everything is like serious with you. I'm gonna hang up now. Night. What's going on with that girl? I feel like there's a lot more venom in her tongue lately. And her problem solving is definitely getting a little on the violent side. Mane Machiro seem to think it's entirely my fault, but I don't remember giving Sashi any orders to act like this. In fact, I make every effort to give her only strictly appropriate instructions, at least from now on. But come to think of it, there was that one incident the other day. I was telling Makina another of my stories and paused to note the most efficient ways to help a panicked officer cadet regain presence in mind of a, in a foxhole. Sashi, who had been listening in, nodded with deep conviction and commented, I see. In other words, blunt weapons are the best medicine for derangement. Surely unrelated. Just another example of the female need to blame every problem on a man. Wow, dude, really? Really, dude? We went there? Really? Really? My phone's ringing. This sort of unfounded generalization is probably exactly the kind of thing that turns women against us, but it helps me regain the necessary composure to make my second call. I show Zamani's number and we turn the phone to my ear. Oh, this is gonna be good. A completely unfamiliar woman's voice answers the phone. Who the hell are you supposed to be? I pull the phone away from my ear and double check the screen. I'm definitely connected to the on his number. Must be one of her friends. <laughs> Yeah, it's me. Who the hell was that woman? Is she on morphine? Oh, People aren't dabbling in hard drugs, are you? Yeah, I don't know. 
何がユージー愛してるいや、they're definitely on something. ちょ、もううるさい静かにしてってばアマネ、my friend, I prescribe a dose of blunt weaponry to the head. はぁ、あ、何言ってんのうん、ちょっと待って、今部屋出るから On the other side of the line, I hear the sound of Amani opening the door and a chorus of shrill voices hooting at her. ごめん、お待たせ。どうしたの急に私の声が聞きたくなったとか Yeah, something like that. I just had to hear that voice of yours, so I couldn't help myself giving you a call. Did I make a nuisance of myself? そ、そんなことはないけど。I see, alright then, enough joking around, let's get to the main topic. Here's the thing, Amani. Makana and I are currently in Yamanashi. Hi? なんで山梨あそっかお墓参り That's right. Come up with the idea pretty suddenly after we saw you off this morning. I borrowed your Boba Taro for the trip. Boba Taro, ちゃんと動いた Yeah, you've been having trouble with the engine suddenly dying on your end of times, right? The CDI is probably the issue. CDI って言われても私にはわかんないけど You're riding a hot rod and you don't even know that much? だって、改造したの私じゃないもの。っていうか、あの状態でバイク屋さんから買ったのよ。What kind of store would sell ridiculous and little ladder r i g h t like that? うん。16の時に免許取って、なんかいいのないかなって近所のバイク屋さんに行ったら、ちょうどそのお店の店員さんが大型に乗り換えるって話でね。前に乗ってたやつを安く売ってくれるって言うから、何も考えないで買っちゃったのよね。でもまあ、原因が分かってよかったわ。なんか信号待ちしてる時とか、突然ストーンと止まっちゃって、30分ぐらい冷まさないとエンジンがかかんないから困ってたのよ。The wire inside the CDI is probably swelling from the heat disconnecting it temporarily. なるほどね。修理したらいくらぐらいかかるのかな。I'm not a motorcycle mechanic. I, I can't tell you that much. いいわ。ボバトロは貸してあげるから、気をつけて乗るのよ。Yeah, understood. I won't do anything stupid. マキナはどうしてるの Well, let's see. For lunch, we had cinnamon rolls and pumpkin bread ba- マキナ baked. Dinner was ramen and fried rice. ちょっと、全然野菜を食べてないじゃない。約束と違うじゃないのよ。I don't have any vegetables here. I'll be sure to make sure to feed her something green tomorrow. きっとよ。なんか不安だな朝昼晩とちゃんと食べさせて夜の8時以降は何も食べさせちゃダメよ What? Is she some kind of magical gremlin?、Oh, whatever. I'll be careful. If anything does come up, you'll be the first to know. わかった。それじゃあ気をつけて帰るのよ。You wanna find back? マキナに怪我させないでね。I have a cat named Gizmo. I named after Gizmo from the gremlin movies. Yep. Doesn't look anything like Gizmo. I don't know why I named him that, but there it is. Understood. All right then. Good night. Spare me. I get enough lectures to my waking hours. For some reason, my dreams are always nightmares. All right then. That just leaves. Ooh, I scroll down to JB's name on my phone contacts list and press the call button. I have to say, though, I'm a man of many callers. Callers, get it?、Uh, call people. The trip itinerary I submitted to JB earlier didn't include any reference to saying the night away from my past. I'm sure they're aware that I'm still in Yamanashi from tracking the GPS on my other phone, but that doesn't mean I can get away with completely blowing off the formalities. Even if I do get in touch, it's easy to picture that shaggy headed blonde. <sighs> Griping and scolding at me again, but if I take the initiative to call instead of making her do it, the voltage of her lightning bolts should decrease slightly. Now, I'm going to get a lot of money. 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 What's this? Burning the midnight oil over there? Because I'm in Eugene, it's a remarkable status. Normal, my current location is the Sako's cabin in Yamanashi. Scheduled return to post by 1200 hours tomorrow. End of message. After recording this extremely concise summary of the necessary information, I'm just on the verge of hanging up when I reflexively hesitate. After a moment's pause, I return my mouth, the receiver to my mouth once more. Good night, Julia. The hour, being what it is, recording a little extra in the way of pleasantry shouldn't cause any issues. My message complete, I hang up and finally snap the phone shut. 
<sighs> As I slide the phone under back into my pocket, a sigh spills and prompted out of my mouth. In the isolated mountain night, the only sounds are the rustling of trees in the wind and the chirping of insects reveling in the summer. I don't mind not hearing people or their machines in the least, but the bugs are fairly noisy in their own right. That said, it just makes you feel anxious when things get too quiet. Human beings are pretty hard to please. Hearing nothing but the sounds you make yourself is a genuinely terrifying thing. There was a time years ago when I woke up half buried under a pile of soil and sand, unable to remember how I'd come to be there. I must have lain there for a good three minutes, racking my brain before finally realizing that a field artillery shell had landed nearby. Pushed away violently by the man behind me, I'd fallen roughly into a foxhole as dirt rained down. When I crawled up out of the hole, I noticed that my eardrums were malfunctioning badly. I couldn't hear a thing other than a high-pitched ringing sound. It was the middle of the night, so my field of vision was just as poor. The small slivers of moonlight trickling through the trees above weren't enough to make out any movement around me. The fear that had been swirling around my gut became a cold dread creeping slowly up my spine. I felt like I might be the only person on earth, as if I'd been left behind on a dead and empty husk of a world. The night can be very dark sometimes. When I'm facing it alone, I always remember that moment. Ah, Sako. Looking up into the sky, I hear her name slip out of my mouth. Just how long am I planning to drag her memory around like a ball and chain? It's not like Asako wanted that herself. She told me flat out, didn't she? If I die, forget about me within a year. It's been a year and a half. I should have forgotten her completely by now. I promised I would, yet I haven't. It's hard, Sako, being alone. Snob, snob, and grow a pair. You have someone to protect yourself now, don't you? I can almost hear the words. Feel the slap upside the head, but she's no longer here to deliver them. Ah, <sighs> August 9th. The next day, just as scheduled, Maka and I returned to the Mihama Academy dorm a little before noon. Although the total length of our trip was barely more than a day. For Machina, it seems to have qualified as a genuine adventure. From the moment she woke up this morning, the girl was even more hyper than usual. She insisted that just heading back would be no fun, so after I deposited her in the tandem seat, we ate a quick breakfast of dried fish and a diner open early from the local fishermen, then drove around on a lightning tour of the major local sightseeing points, eventually winding our way leisurely back while taking frequent breaks. <laughs> I don't understand what you're supposed to be ashamed about. It's not like we went to Guam or something, you know? Kazami-san, Maki-chan, okaerinasai. We're home. How was it? The hotel is the hotel. It was fun, Yosan. When I was in the hotel, I saw the beautiful landscape of Tappo-Jo. That's in Saipan. You climb Mount Fuji. And we only made it as far as the fifth station. Now it's Hawaii. Incidentally, the things you're waving around with a giant grin on your face are rice cakes with black honey. Don't start morphing in abstract geopolitical constructs. So, Bombarded by Machina's raw energy, elevated beyond baseline levels into something imperiously close to a frenzy, Sakaki sighs heavily, her expression vaguely gloomy. I can practically see the words of Return of the Troublemaker rising up her throat, only to be forced back down through an effort of will. Kino, 
違うわよなんでか知らないけど頭がズキズキするのよね昨日の夜の記憶もなんだか曖昧だし勉強のしすぎではありませんか頭は大切にしてくださいね大事に使えば一生使えますから何か No, I'm just wondering where to be getting jabbing at that. I mean, the idea of mature studying is enough to make you die laughing. <laughs> And if your head ever stops functioning, your life's over, so the second part of the sentence is a meaningless truism. But first and foremost, you're the one judged that deranged blonde be a threat and subdued her through blunt force. Kazami san ga do s h t e m o t s u k o m i t a i no de areba, isagi yo ku t s u k o m a r e m a s u ga, deki reba t s u k o m a n a i de kudasai. I see. At times it's hard being a man. No, 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 Didn't seem like she was going back to bed anytime soon, so I ended up leaving a little earlier than planned. We improvised a half assed little sightseeing tour on the way back. ちゃんと山にも行って湖にも行ってきたっつうのじゃあ何山に登って何湖を見てきたか覚えているえっとアッポさんとマンコわお今なんて言った聞き返すその勇気回復しますミチル様クロスのノーでボートタウンスマウンズのカントリースバッ That's one in the Philippines, as far as like that. Wrong hemispheres. You mangled the name so horribly, I want to wash out my ears with soap. Tinzen Oshko Nijan, I know ya. To Yuka, Iris San Anata, was it to eat much guy to eat? So, eh, so young, what's a nakayo? Kumamoto? Well. I don't know, maybe this is a bit of a rebound? Nani sore? Even Makina wouldn't run around shrieking on a visit to a grave. Maybe this is just a recoil for all the time she spent actually behaving herself. Well, then again, I did see a new side of her, so maybe the whole hyperact is an attempt at hiding her embarrassment. Hey, to. So you go to you know, you go now, you. Kara ga burelu jan ka sa. In any case, I'm glad we got back in one piece. なんだかお疲れのご様子ですね。Yeah, I won't deny I'm a little worn out. Amani's Bobataro is fine for touring around the neighborhood, but it's just not that suited for long distance travel. Couldn't quite stomach taking the thing onto the expressway, so we came all the way back on local roads. That's probably contributed to the fatigue as well. お風呂にでも入られて、少しお休みになられてはどうでしょう。いいね私もお風呂入って寝る Hold on, don't you have your part time job this afternoon? Oh, 2時からなのよさ。だからさっち、1時に起こして。うん、わかった。1時だね。To be honest, I wasn't able to get much rest at all last night. I've had a surprising string of days recently where I've managed to get a solid 8 hours of sleep, so I'd almost started to forget. But I've never been in a deep slumber and typically jerk awake several times at night. Yesterday was a particularly awful example. It's like I'm physically exhausted, but I can definitely feel something like mental weariness weighing down on me. So after reporting our safe return to Mana and JB, I apply my eye drops and lie down. Practically the moment my eyes close, some tense cord inside me snaps at last and I tumble down into unconsciousness. When I heard about the bombing, the sky outside had already grown pink, and the cries of cicadas were beginning to cool down the scorched earth. With a few hours of deep and dreamless sleep behind me, I walk out into the lobby, 
trying to shake off the slight lingering heaviness in the core of my head. I encounter Sakaki there, glued to the television, and received the unexpected news that a bombing has taken place in the vicinity of Mishima Cape Station. According to the news program she's watching, an automobile parked by the road in the shopping district abruptly exploded around 6 this evening. But that's not what I need to know right now. And is Makina alright? However... すごし様子がおかしかったわ。多分あまり見たくないものを見てしまって、少しショックを受けたようね。I Looks like the vehicle that exploded was a standard sized passenger automobile, but from the low resolution images on the television news program, it's not possible to identify the model or brand. However, Sakaki is clinging away at her no clicking away at her notebook PC as we're watching the show, and eventually finds a better quality photograph taken at the scene on the internet. Through that we're able to establish it was a German luxury car. The vehicle had completely flipped over from the force of the explosives, but as a rule, German automobiles are built sturdy. The body itself may be damaged beyond the point of repair, but the cabin wasn't crushed or deformed. This advertisement brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. At a glance, I'm willing to bet they used Semtex, and the explosion clearly occurred underneath the car. Since the interior of the car itself wasn't blown apart, it seems likely that they used a shape charge deliberately set to flip the entire thing over. It would seem to suggest that they didn't know ahead of time which seat their target would be using. Given such extensive damage to the entire vehicle, even if the cabin remained intact, there's no guarantee anyone would get out of the ensuing fire alive. Yeah? What? What do you mean? Oh shit. No way. Who was it? Oh no. No. Her younger sister. Makina's sister was. But why was she even. Oh, hold on. Mishimazaki no eki no minamigawa ni. Ima atarashi fashion bilu ga kense tsu de shon. Yeah, that one was supposed to open before summer vacation, but ended up getting delayed. I remember Mani mentioning something about this. From what she told me, the place was going to be something like a mall, focusing on high fashion. Numerous brands had signed up as tenants, along with restaurants and a movie theater. In particular, there were some foreign boutiques that would be launching their first stores in Japan there, so its upcoming opening was apparently generating some real buzz. その工事の遅れ自体にも色々な裏があるようなのだけれど。今は関係ないと考えた問題ないわ。イリスさんの妹さんはオープン前のとあるブランドショップに買い物に来ていて、その帰りに事件に遭遇したらしいわ。Why I see. JB's registered on a similar site, actually. It's impossible to join without the recommendation of an existing member. A new account is in the tens of millions of yen. And even the monthly fee is in the millions. I remember her complaining about the ridiculous charges. Tens of millions of yen? Wow. That's a lot of money. But for some reason, the stream of new applicants never seemed to dry up. Come to think of it, it's a little disturbing that this girl already has a membership to a site like that at her age. それなりに信頼のおける
what's happened with the Sears family? What's what's going on? You know what? We're gonna we're gonna hopefully uh, shed some light on this new development in the next episode of the Fruit of Grisaya. Take it easy, everybody. <laughs>